modes of practice. Poly versions. Poly English version and Poly Devanagari version. In brief, Bhikkhus, there are these four modes of practice. What for? Practice that is painful with sluggish direct knowledge. Practice that is painful with quick direct knowledge. Practice that is pleasant with sluggish direct knowledge. And practice that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge. These are the four modes of practice. In detail. Bhikkhus, there are these four modes of practice. What for? Practice that is painful with sluggish direct knowledge. Practice that is painful with quick direct knowledge. Practice that is pleasant with sluggish direct knowledge. And practice that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge. And what, Bhikkhus, is the practice that is painful with sluggish direct knowledge? Here, someone is by nature strongly prone to lust and often experiences pain and dejection born of lust. By nature he is strongly prone to hatred and often experiences pain and dejection born of hatred. By nature he is strongly prone to delusion and often experiences pain and dejection born of delusion. These five faculties arise in him feebly. The faculty of faith, the faculty of energy, the faculty of mindfulness, the faculty of samadhi, and the faculty of punna. Because these five faculties are feeble in him, he sluggishly attains the immediacy condition for the destruction of the taints. This is called practice that is painful with sluggish direct knowledge. And what is practice that is painful with quick direct knowledge? Here, someone is nature strongly prone to lust, hatred, delusion and often experiences pain and dejection born of delusion. These five faculties arise in him prominently. The faculty of faith. The faculty of punna. Because these five faculties are prominent in him, he quickly attains the immediacy condition for the destruction of the taints. This is called practice that is painful with quick direct knowledge. And what is practice that is pleasant with sluggish direct knowledge? Here, someone by nature is not strongly prone to lust and does not often experience pain and dejection born of lust. By nature he is not strongly prone to hatred and does not often experience pain and dejection born of hatred. By nature he is not strongly prone to delusion and does not often experience pain and dejection born of delusion. These five facilities arise in him feebly. The faculty of faith. The faculty of wisdom. Because these five faculties are feeble in him, he sluggishly attains the immediacy condition for the destruction of the taints. This is called practice that is pleasant with sluggish direct knowledge. And what is practice that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge? Here, someone by nature is not strongly prone to lust, hatred, delusion and does not often experience pain and dejection born of delusion. These five faculties arise in him prominently. The faculty of faith. The faculty of punna. Because these five faculties are prominent in him, he quickly attains the immediacy condition for the destruction of the taints. This is called practice that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge. These, bhikkhus, are the four modes of practice. Unattractiveness. Opening paragraph as above. And what, bhikkhus, is practice that is painful with sluggish direct knowledge? Here. A bhikkhu dwells watching the unattractiveness of the body, perceiving the repulsiveness of food, perceiving non-delight in the entire world, watching impermanence in all conditioned phenomena. And he has the perception of death well established internally. He dwells depending upon these five trainee powers. The power of faith, the power of moral shame, the power of moral dread, the power of energy, and the power of punna. These five faculties arise in him feebly. The faculty of faith, the faculty of energy, the faculty of mindfulness, the faculty of samadhi, and the faculty of punna. Because these five faculties are feeble, he sluggishly attains the immediacy condition for the destruction of the taints. This is called practice that is painful with sluggish direct knowledge. And what is practice that is painful with quick direct knowledge? Here, a bhikkhu dwells watching the unattractiveness of the body. 
and he has the perception of death well established internally. He dwells depending upon these five trainee powers. The power of faith, the power of punna. These five faculties arise in him prominently. The faculty of faith. The faculty of punna. Because these five faculties are prominent, he quickly attains the immediacy condition for the destruction of the taints. This is called practice that is painful with quick direct knowledge. And what is practice that is pleasant with sluggish direct knowledge? Here. Secluded from sensual pleasures. Secluded from harmful states, a bhikkhu enters and dwells in the first yahana, which consists of bliss and happiness born of seclusion, accompanied by thought and examination. With the subsiding of thought and examination. He enters and dwells in the second yahana, which has internal placidity and unification of mind and consists of bliss and happiness born of samadhi, without thought and examination. With the fading away as well of bliss, he dwells equanimous and, mindful and completely comprehending, he experiences happiness with the body. He enters and dwells in the third yahana of which the noble ones declare. He is equanimous, mindful, one who dwells happily. With the abandoning of pleasure and pain. And with the previous passing away of joy and dejection, he enters and dwells in the fourth yahana, neither painful nor pleasant, which has purification of mindfulness by indifference. He dwells depending upon these five trainee powers. The power of faith. The power of punna. These five faculties arise in him feebly. The faculty of faith. The faculty of punna. Because these five faculties are feeble, he sluggishly attains the immediacy condition for the destruction of the taints. This is called practice that is pleasant with sluggish direct knowledge. And what is practice that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge? Here, secluded from sensual pleasures secluded from harmful states, a bhikkhu enters and dwells in the first yahana. The second yahana. The third yahana. The fourth yahana. He dwells depending upon these five trainee powers. The power of faith. The power of punna. These five faculties arise in him prominently. The faculty of faith. The faculty of punna. Because these five faculties are prominent, he quickly attains the immediacy condition for the destruction of the taints. This is called practice that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge. These, bhikkhus, are the four modes of practice. Forgiveness. Bhikkhus, there are these four modes of practice. What for? The impatient practice, the patient practice, the taming practice, and the calming practice. And what, bhikkhus, is the impatient practice? Here, someone insults one who insults him, scolds one who scolds him, and argues with one who picks an argument with him. This is called the impatient practice. And what is the patient practice? Here, someone does not insult one who insults him, does not scold one who scolds him, and does not argue with one who picks an argument with him. This is called the patient practice. And what is the taming practice? Here, having seen a form with the eye, a bhikkhu does not grasp its marks and features. Since, if he left the eye faculty unrestrained, bad harmful states of longing and dejection might invade him, he practices restraint over it. He guards the eye faculty, he undertakes the restraint of the eye faculty. Having heard a sound with the ear. Having smelled an odor with the nose. Having tasted a taste with the tongue. Having felt a tactile object, with the body. Having cognized a mental phenomenon with the mind, a bhikkhu does not grasp its marks and features. Since, if he left the mind faculty unrestrained, bad harmful states of longing and dejection might invade him, he practices restraint over it. He guards the mind faculty, he undertakes the restraint of the mind faculty. This is called the taming practice. And what is the calming practice? Here, a bhikkhu does not tolerate an arisen sensual thought. He abandons it, dispels it, calms it down, terminates it, and obliterates it. He does not tolerate an arisen thought of ill will. An arisen thought of harming. 
bad harmful states whenever they arise. He abandons them, dispels them, calms them down, terminates them, and obliterates them. This is called the calming practice. These, bhikkhus, are the four modes of practice. Patient. Bhikkhus, there are these four modes of practice. What for? The impatient practice, the patient practice, the taming practice, and the calming practice. And what, bhikkhus, is the impatient practice? Here, someone does not patiently endure cold and heat. Hunger and thirst. Contact with flies, mosquitoes, wind, the burning sun, and serpents. Rude and offensive ways of speech. He is unable to bear up with arisen bodily sensations that are painful, racking, sharp, piercing, harrowing, disagreeable, sapping one's vitality. This is called the impatient practice. And what is the patient practice? Here, someone patiently endures cold and heat. Rude and offensive ways of speech. He is able to bear up with arisen bodily sensations that are painful, racking, sharp, piercing, harrowing, disagreeable, sapping one's vitality. This is called the patient practice. And what, bhikkhus, is the taming practice? As in. And what, bhikkhus, is the calming practice? As in. These, bhikkhus, are the four modes of practice. Both. Bhikkhus, there are these four modes of practice. What for? Practice that is painful with sluggish direct knowledge. Practice that is painful with quick direct knowledge. Practice that is pleasant with sluggish direct knowledge. And practice that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge. The mode of practice that is painful with sluggish direct knowledge is declared to be inferior for both reasons. Because it is painful and because direct knowledge is sluggish. This mode of practice is declared to be inferior for both reasons. The mode of practice that is painful with quick direct knowledge is declared to be inferior because of its painfulness. The mode of practice that is pleasant with sluggish direct knowledge is declared to be inferior because of its sluggishness. The mode of practice that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge is declared to be superior for both reasons. Because practice is pleasant and because direct knowledge is quick. This mode of practice is declared to be superior for both reasons. These, bhikkhus, are the four modes of practice. Magalana. Then the Venerable Sariputta approached the Venerable Mahamajalana and exchanged greetings with him. When they had concluded their greetings and cordial talk, he sat down to one side and said to the Venerable Mahamajalana, Friend Magalana, there are these four modes of practice. What for? Practice that is painful with sluggish direct knowledge. Practice that is painful with quick direct knowledge. Practice that is pleasant with sluggish direct knowledge and practice that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge. Through which of these four modes of practice was your mind liberated from the taints by non-clinging? Of these four modes of practice, friend Sariputta, it was through the mode that is painful with quick direct knowledge that my mind was liberated from the taints by non-clinging. Sariputta. Then the Venerable Mahamajalana approached the Venerable Sariputta and said to him, Friend Sariputta, there are these four modes of practice what for? Practice that is painful with sluggish direct knowledge. Practice that is painful with quick direct knowledge. Practice that is pleasant with sluggish direct knowledge. And practice that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge. Through which of these four modes of practice was your mind liberated from the taints by non-clinging? Of these four modes of practice, friend Magalana, it was through the mode that is pleasant with quick direct knowledge that my mind was liberated from the taints by non-clinging. Through exertion. Bhikkhus, there are these four kinds of persons found existing in the world. What for? Here, some person attains Nibbana through exertion in this very life. Another person attains Nibbana through exertion with the breakup of the body. Still another person attains Nibbana without exertion in this very life and still another person attains Nibbana without exertion with the breakup of the body. And how, bhikkhus, 
does a person attain Nibbana through exertion in this very life? Here. A bhikkhu dwells watching the unattractiveness of the body, perceiving the repulsiveness of food, perceiving non-delight in the entire world, watching impermanence in all conditioned phenomena. And he has the perception of death well established internally. He dwells depending upon these five trainee powers. The power of faith, the power of moral shame, the power of moral dread, the power of energy, and the power of punna. These five faculties arise in him prominently. The faculties of faith, energy, mindfulness, samadhi, and punna. Because these five faculties are prominent, he attains nibbana through exertion in this very life. This is how a person attains Nibbana through exertion in this very life. And how does a person attain Nibbana through exertion with the breakup of the body? Here, a bhikkhu dwells watching the unattractiveness of the body. And he has the perception of death well established internally. He dwells depending upon these five trainee powers. The powers of faith. And punna. These five faculties arise in him feebly. The faculties of faith. And punna. Because these five faculties are feeble, he attains nibbana through exertion with the breakup of the body. This is how a person attains nibbana through exertion with the breakup of the body. And how does a person attain nibbana without exertion in this very life? Here, secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from harmful states, a bhikkhu enters and dwells in the first yahana. The fourth yahana. He dwells depending upon these five trainee powers. The powers of faith. And punna. These five faculties arise in him prominently. The faculties of faith. And punna. Because these five faculties are prominent, he attains nibbana without exertion in this very life. This is how a person attains nibbana without exertion in this very life. And how does a person attain Nibbana without exertion with the breakup of the body? Here, secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from harmful states, a bhikkhu enters and dwells in the first yahana. The fourth yahana. He dwells depending upon these five trainee powers. The powers of faith. And punna. These five faculties arise in him feebly. The faculties of faith. And punna. Because these five faculties are feeble, he attains Nibbana without exertion with the breakup of the body. This is how a person attains Nibbana without exertion with the breakup of the body. These, bhikkhus, are the four kinds of persons found existing in the world. In conjunction. On one occasion the Venerable Ananda was dwelling at Kosumbi in Gozidas Park. There the Venerable Ananda addressed the bhikkhus. Friends, bhikkhus. Friend, those bhikkhus replied. The Venerable Ananda said this. Friends, whatever bhikkhu or bhikkhuni has declared the attainment of arahantship in my presence has done so by these four paths or by a certain one among them. What for? Here, a bhikkhu develops insight preceded by equanimity. As he is developing insight preceded by equanimity, the path is generated. He pursues this path. Develops it and cultivates it. As he is pursuing, developing, and cultivating this path, the fetters are abandoned and the underlying tendencies are uprooted. Again, a bhikkhu develops equanimity preceded by insight. As he is developing equanimity preceded by insight, the path is generated. He pursues this path, develops it, and cultivates it. As he is pursuing, developing, and cultivating this path, the fetters are abandoned and the underlying tendencies are uprooted. Again, a bhikkhu develops equanimity and insight in conjunction. As he is developing equanimity and insight in conjunction, the path is generated. He pursues this path, develops it, and cultivates it. As he is pursuing, developing, and cultivating this path, the fetters are abandoned and the underlying tendencies are uprooted. Again, a bhikkhu's mind is seized by restlessness about the Dhamma. But there comes an occasion when his mind becomes internally steady, composed, unified, and concentrated. Then the path is generated in him. He pursues this path, develops it, and cultivates it. 
as he is pursuing, developing, and cultivating this path, the fetters are abandoned and the underlying tendencies are uprooted. Whatever Bhikkhu or Bhikkhuni, friends, has declared the attainment of Arahantship in my presence has done so by these four paths or by a certain one among them.